My wife and I settled in for the evening after a tough day's work. Kids are in bed, we're in the comfort of ours, looking across at our TV, checking out the multitude of apps and debating what we should possibly watch. This became a nightmare. After what felt like an eternity of deliberation, we fell back on an old staple. Everybody loves Raymond. Because we're 85 years old and basic bitches. The point I'm getting at isn't twofold. Nah, it's multifold. You see, it's not simply the fact anymore that streaming services have become overwhelming. The options are astronomical. It's that the shows each service provides has also become unbearable. And because of the exclusivity of these shows and movies, that's a weird word to say. Exclusivity. I think I nailed it. It's hard for everyone to even be on the same page about what we're watching. Now, I realize this is the most first world problem anyone could ever possibly have. There's too many movies, there's too many options. H help me, help my, my life is so hard. I get it, but for the sake of this conversation, it's the worst thing ever. Oh cool, Disney Plus just informed me that the new season of Mandalorian is starting shortly and that you should subscribe to Adam Does Movies. Wow, that's weird. Why would they put that in there? They don't even know what this channel is. Crazy. Well, you should probably do it anyways, just to be safe. Squid Game was all the talk recently, but guess what? Not everyone owns Netflix. Sure, it's one of the most popular streaming apps, but that doesn't mean everyone has access to it all the same. I miss the days of event TV, where the finale of Friends or Seinfeld was on and everyone around the world gathered on their sofas to watch. I miss having the conversations week to week about Breaking Bad and how Mr. White's possibly gonna get out of this one. I long for the day where I could watch HBO with my fellow peers and get disappointed all over again by the finale of Game of Thrones. And even in those instances I mentioned, people were left out, not everyone had cable, not everyone had the HBO Now app, or their friends had it, or their grandma had it, and they just took it from them. No. So there was already segmentation. But now, because of the emergence of all of these apps, we have not only split the audience, we've sliced, we've cut, we've diced, we fractured it off so much that there's just little pockets of people that get to enjoy these shows and talk about them. I can't even count the number of times people have suggested shows to me that were on a platform I don't have access to, or have said, you should check this out. Well, I would, but I'm watching 14 other shows right now trying to give things a chance. Every time I open up Netflix or Hulu or HBO Max or one of the other multitude of things I have access to, I am overwhelmed by the new movies that have come out of nowhere. Where the hell did this come from with Jake Gyllenhaal? When did he have time to make a movie about being a pilot or whatever that is? I don't even know. I don't even know. Recently, we started sharing some apps with our relatives. So we give them access to our Hulu account and our HBO Max. And in return, they give us Peacock and Universal Plus. So they're getting a much better deal here. Also, they're not paying for the Peacock like premium or whatever. So there's commercials. Why don't you just shoot me in the face? Commercials? Are you shitting me with this? Pony up the extra couple bucks. What is this, 1972? I don't want to watch 10 minutes a show and then be treated to 16 different horse pill medications. It's a separate, separate thing. It's not part of this. There are seriously like 15 movies I wanted to watch and review on the channel, but I don't have the time. And these movies just keep coming at me like a tsunami of garbage. And most of them are just that. Most of them are just shit. Because the name of the game now isn't making good quality content, it's just making content. Because they need to pull in as many eyes onto their app as possible. They need to stay relevant. They need to stay in the news feed on Twitter. They need to stay on Facebook, having people talk about the new hot show that's out. These services are often month to month, so you can just cancel at any time and jump over to the next one. And that's what a lot of people do. So Netflix and their ilk have to constantly push new shit out the door. They're going to green light everything. From the little boy who has the super ability to see half a second into the future, to the trans mom who's just trying to make it through the day. Everything is on the table. There was a brilliant episode of South Park years and years ago. I know that's redundant, a lot of South Park's brilliant. But uh, Cartman pretended to be the Osimo 500, or is it Osimo 5000? I think it's 5,000. Anyway, he's just in a cardboard robot box. And somehow he ends up falling in the hands of a movie executive who wants him to program as many new hit shows and movies as he can. And Cartman just keeps saying, um, okay, this one stars Adam Sandler and he's on a beach and every one of them starred Adam Sandler and it was always some stupid off the cuff idea. 
Netflix literally did this a few years back by signing Adam Sandler to make like six garbage movies. They don't care. Whether it's rebooting an old classic for nostalgia's sake, like that 90s show or Fuller House or Saved by the Bell on Peacock, they don't really care if it's good. It's just gonna bring in different walks of life. And speaking of Peacock, really NBC, was this the best name you could come up with? I get that your mascot's a peacock. That doesn't mean you need to name the app that. Either way you shorten it, it's disgusting. Hey, you wanna watch some Office on the cock? Hey, check out Parks and Rec on P. What are we doing here? I guess the full-blown takeaway is I miss the days of being charmed. I miss the days of being wooed, of, of being enticed to watch something, a, a movie, a TV show. I'm kind of a fancy bitch. I like being wined and dined, and it seems like they're not even trying anymore because they don't have to. They just have to get out material. All right, I said a lot. I don't have a solution to this problem. I don't, I don't think there is one. It's just we live in this time now and this is what we have to deal with. I'm out of touch. I, I miss the good old days where you could walk into the box office and see the one new movie released that week and talk about it with your friends. It could be terrible, but it's all you had. Now there's just an overwhelming amount of shit on display that, you know, there's good stuff in there, don't get me wrong, but man, it's tough to weed through it all. And I wish that we could all kind of share in some of the good ones together, but it seems like this group over here is talking about Yellowstone, this group over here is talking about Ozarks. I mean, you're never on the same page really, and it's unfortunate because there is good products being made. They're just lost in the shuffle. I'd love to hear from you now. Let me know in the comments what you think. Like the video if you had a good time and make sure to subscribe if you haven't. I put out a ton of movie related content almost every single day now. Take care. Thank you for watching the video. If you made it to this point, now is the time I push my Patreon. It's patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies or you can join here on YouTube via the join button. There's a $1 tier even so you can just say, hey, this was funny. I like you. I like the cut of your, cut of your jip cut of your jig. I don't know what that phrase is. Never made sense to me. Here's a dollar. And then there you have it. That's it. That's the whole, that's the whole pitch.